Not long ago, I made two videos about Supabase. I did a first impressions and a full deep dive on how to implement Supabase with a Spellkit app. And initially, before I had really spent any time with Supabase, I assumed it was probably kind of crap. I'd used Firebase before, I'd used these sort of things before, and I honestly didn't have that high of expectations going into it. I thought it'd be kind of weak, but it really wasn't. In fact, I would argue it's extremely, extremely good. I really enjoyed using it, and I think, I hope that came through in those two videos where, like, I think that this is a really compelling solution for the back end in a app, especially when you're working with a very small team or alone, which in many cases is what I'm doing. So, for me, it made a lot of sense, and I thought it was really good, but over time and over as I've been using it more and working on my other projects, I've kind of come to the realization that I don't actually see myself ever using it in a web app. And I'll talk about why in this video, but basically if for all the future salt kit apps I'm gonna build, for the updates to the existing Next.js apps I have, for all these different things, anytime I'm working with a website or a modern web app, I don't really see myself using it because I don't think it makes all that much sense to me. However, there is one use case that I found where I think it's really, really great and where I'm actually using it. I'm going to be using, well, not going to be, I am using Supabase currently in a very serious project I'm working on. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick breakdown of why. So uh, let's get into it. I have diagrammed out right here a Spellkit app and a mobile app. What I'm building here is going to be an entirely mobile platform. I'm not building a desktop app for it. And well, I might be doing a minor website or something, but it's going to be side piece to it and the main product itself is going to be a mobile app it's built with react native and i've obviously needed to find a solution for database user auth storage all those different things um if you guys want to see what i'm working on this is actually a pretty serious project i'm working on it's not like a silly little one-off thing it's a thing that's actually long term we're working on this for real it's, um, it's called Block. We have the landing page. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. We're super early on and it's obviously in very active development right now. It's not ready. It's not live. But if you're curious to see what we're working on, definitely check out the landing page. It's effectively going to be a social calendar type thing, similar to like a Calendly or Cal.com thing, except instead of being desktop and business focused, it's entirely focused on groups, friends, a mobile experience, and a younger audience. So I think it'll be really cool. We're really excited about it. We've gotten good initial traction working on campus and that kind of thing. So this is going to be a really cool project that I'm super excited to build out. But obviously here, we're going to talk about the technical side of this. So for the tech stack, I had to figure out what the heck the back end is going to look like for this. In all the past videos I've done, I've mostly done web focused stuff. And I'm not actually not, I don't come from a mobile app background. This is the first big mobile app I've ever built. So one of the things that's unique these days with modern full stack web apps is that our client and server are basically the same app. I The best way I could figure out how to show this and diagram this out is just by having like a server and a client there within the bounds of our SvelteKit app. We have our server loaders, we have our server actions, all these different things in our SvelteKit app and we can execute server side code all in the same code base as our front end client side templates, JavaScript, all that stuff. It's really great and it leads to a really great experience, but we don't have that in the mobile app because obviously a mobile app is going to be entirely client side. The code base of the mobile app will only ever run on their device. We're not server side rendering mobile app pages because oftentimes they need to work without online functionality. Now, realistically for most apps these days, obviously you do need an internet connection to fetch data, to deal with a login, to deal with all that stuff. But Still, we don't have a way to effectively SSR our um, mobile apps. We're gonna need to have a separate server and that's where Supabase comes in. So basically what Supabase does for me is I can just take this right here and instead of having to make an external server and then make a fetch request to said server and then from the server go to my database or and then all the different external services we're gonna have to use because any production app has a bunch of different things it has to talk to logging services, image services, auth services, all these different things. I'd have to constantly go from client to server to this, to this, to this, and it gets really, really obnoxious to work with, especially in a small team and alone. SvelteKit kind of solves that because since they're one in the same, I don't have to deal with a lot of that code duplication. I don't have to deal with writing a bunch of annoying fetch requests on the client to just load data. I can just do export let data and grab it, which is why I love this so much. I can talk to my data, my database directly from the app, but here in my mobile app, I can't do that. So me as a solo developer on this project, I would have to go through and manually do, I'd basically have to write two big 
projects at once. I'd have to write an entire backend, an entire client, and I'd have to handle figuring out how to talk between the two of them. Probably the easiest way to do that would be TRPC, but setting that up is a bitch. And even if you did get all that set up, you know, you're still going to have to have a lot of redundant code. You're going to have to deal with a lot of different stuff that would really just suck. Versus with Supabase, what I can do is I can just put this here. That's it. It's just client and Supabase. And the client can talk directly to Supabase because Supabase has the database. It has the auth. It has everything built into it. And one of the things that I don't think I hammered home enough during those videos when I talked about Supabase is that Supabase has a client-side library. I think I talked about it in passing, but basically all I said about it was I don't like it. And over here in Svelkit land and website land, I stand by that because I like handling things on the server. But in mobile app land, when I don't have access to a server, it feels really, really great to be able to just query the database effectively from the front end using row level security to protect the endpoints. So um, I don't want to show too much of the code base here and give too much away. Again, we'll have much more to talk about on this in the future, but I'll just do this as a very quick and brief example of what we can do. So in here, this is the React Native app. We have a um, component right here, which is going to be the selector during onboarding to set your birthday. Pretty standard stuff. Now, if we go over here and we look at this, in a Svelkit app, this would be pretty simple. I would define a server action, which would be like set birthday or something. For the front end, I'd have a form. On submit would fire that action. When it's done, it would set you to the next step. Pretty simple stuff. It'd be a really easy, nice, tight coupling thing, and we wouldn't have to worry about too much code duplication. That code duplication is also the reason why you haven't seen much Golang content on this channel lately. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense for me to have client, server, throw another server in between here, then database, then so like, that's the whole reason. It's because I can't really justify it with this right here. And I have a whole video on that if you wanna check that out, I'll link it down below. But basically what we can do now is we can just go directly from client to database. So if you're familiar with Drizzle, this will look really similar. It's just supabase.fromprofile.update the birthday where the ID equals the user ID. And we can set row level security within our Postgres to basically make it so that you have to have the right, you have to be logged in as a user to update the birthday. So this isn't a security risk where like, obviously for those of you who kind of see where this is going, if this is client side code, that means that it can be executed by anyone, which means that anyone could update anyone's birthday, but they have ways around that. I'll link the documentation for that down below. But Basically, what you're looking at right here is just a really clean and nice way of handling things. Because think about what I would have to do if I didn't do this. If I didn't just set this right here in these six or seven lines of code, I would have to have an entirely separate server. And that separate server would have to, I'd have to create an endpoint that was like a patch endpoint for the birthday. And then within that endpoint, I'd have to document it for myself or I'd have to do some sort of... I mean, I guess I wouldn't have to document it, but it'd be really painful to come back and look at it later. So I'd have to put something on there to signify what it is. And then I'd have to, within that endpoint, go in, run the SQL statement, do all that stuff, go back to the server, return it, go back to the client. Then from the client, I'd have to go through and I'd have to manually, okay, make a fetch request to this external endpoint, pass in these parameters, pass in my auth header, all these different things. It'd get really obnoxious, really annoying. And I would lose type safety. I lose all the benefits of this sort of full stack system, which I really love. And it'd just be a mess. I could do, it would just take like a hundred lines of code to do this exact same thing. And that will compound like crazy over time as I'm working on this super complex app. You know, it's just not worth my time to duplicate all this stuff. So for me, Supabase or something like it, I mean, I think Supabase is really the best one in 2023, but Supabase is just awesome because right here I can do all this and a really cool thing that I didn't even mention before so it's fully type safe so I went in here and I passed in first name or something and if I passed in uh say if I passed in say for example 12 it's going to yell at me because it knows that this needs to be a string so it's really cool and really powerful all the stuff you can get in a client side library which will just make your life so much easier so for me that's why I'm using Supabase. I Still maintain that on a full full stack web app, I don't need it. But when I'm working with a mobile app like this, I really do need it. And it's been a joy to work with. 
I'm pretty deep into this app. I've got the calendar functionality working. I've got a ton of stuff going in here. It's been great to work with. The most painful part has definitely been the fact that it's a mobile app and the fact that I'm working with the React Native and the fact that I don't fully understand all this stuff. It's a really fun type of hell to see a C++ binary break on the 17th build step when you don't even know what build step one is doing. So a lot still to learn there. A lot, really, really long way to go. But hopefully this makes sense, and hopefully if you guys are looking into doing a mobile app or trying to do anything in that realm, you check this out. Superbase is really great. I think the only problem I have with the service is the documentation feels a little off to me. I still can't put my finger on exactly what's wrong with it. It's really good. I think it just lacks some more... I think it lacks good examples. I think that's really the biggest problem with it. But, you know, once you've used it for a while, it gets really simple and it's very, very intuitive, very drizzle-like. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I will talk to you very soon.